Hi everyone, Paul here from FamilyWheels.ca with another car review for your growing family. And since 1992, the Subaru WRX has been bringing its rally heritage onto roads around the world. People have loved this thing and it's become a real cult favorite. Since it was first brought out in the early 90s, we've got a bigger vehicle, we've got more interior amenities, we've got more horsepower, but here's something interesting. A couple of years back, Subaru got rid of the hatchback option in this vehicle. So we're in it this week to see if something small and sporty and zippy like this can still work for families. It's the WRX this week, thanks to the folks at Subaru Calgary here on Family Wheels. Since we are a more family-oriented car review site, let's talk right away here about why the hatchback disappeared in the WRX, because it was certainly the more utilitarian option, and it all came down to business. They just weren't selling enough of them, which might surprise you out here in Western Canada, because we really like hatchbacks out here. But out east, it's a different story. In fact, Subaru tells me that they were selling two-to-one sedans versus hatchbacks out east, and then if you look stateside, south of the border, it was even more sedans, four-to-one sedans versus hatchbacks down in the United States. So it just didn't make sense to keep the WRX hatch kicking around. At least that's what I'm being told by Subaru Calgary. But there are a lot of things that have really improved in this car too. This latest car I think looks far better than any previous version of the WRX. Of course, that's subjective. Here on the inside, less subjective, far better refined interior. And then when we're looking at the value for this car, I think it's pretty top notch for a performance oriented four door sedan. For $30,000, you can get into one of these things plus tax here in Canada. That's the base price. But you're getting a 268 horsepower twin scroll turbo, two liters, four cylinders, but so much fun. This car can really go once you get it up above 3,000 RPMs. Below that, it's a little bit sleepy, but I kind of like the fact that it has two personalities because it means that if you're not driving it super hard, its fuel economy is still pretty respectable. I've averaged this week actually below what Subaru suggests what you should see. On the highway, I average 7.4 liters per 100 kilometers, and here in the city, I've been averaging 9.8 liters per 100 kilometers. And that's not me driving like a granny all the time either. There have been times where I've been pushing this car to see how it would do. It's a good thing this car is seeing some decent fuel efficiency numbers this week though, because Subaru suggests that you put 91 octane fuel into the WRX, and that adds up fast, because right now, it's about 20 cents extra per liter when you're fueling up at the pump. There are some turbos out there that don't require an extra, you know, 91 octane fuel boost, but here in the WRX, apparently you need it, and yeah, that's something to keep in mind when you're shopping around for a car, because that's going to add up over time. Also standard in this vehicle is Subaru's amazing all-wheel drive system, which kind of speaks for itself. We also have a rear backup camera built into a 6.2-inch infotainment system. We have performance-oriented seats. The front seats are heated, by the way. We have 17-inch wheels, so an excellent package at $30,000. These seats, by the way, are definitely on the firmer side. I don't mind them, but it's just kind of like when you're shopping for a mattress. Some people prefer a softer mattress, and in that case, you're probably not going to like these seats very much, but man, do they ever hug you through the corners nicely. My suggestion, make sure to take it for a nice long test drive to really get a feel for whether these seats are going to work for you. Now, speaking of the sort of ride comfort in this vehicle, I'm not going to lie, you're not going to be drinking, you know, tea from porcelain teacups in this car, but it's not quite as stiff and unlivable as some cars in this segment. I've driven the STI before, the more extreme version of this car from Subaru, and ah, the suspension in that car is just way too stiff for daily living. Same goes for that Focus RS that I was driving around a couple of weeks ago in Quebec. What a fun car! But it just, I mean, it, it was, the suspension was unforgivably stiff. Here in the WRX, it is on the stiff side, but you can live with it. You can throw your kid in the back and you're not going to have to worry about them chipping their teeth when you go over a bump. It is rather noisy in here though, isn't it? It's right on the high end of any car that we've ever tested. 70 decibels at 100 kilometers an hour based on our decibel reader test makes it tough to even have a conversation with somebody in this car when you really do get it running up at higher revs. And it also is rather noisy when you're going over a gravel road. And that's because of this sport body molding that's built into the vehicle. You're kind of getting that gravel noise kicking up off of the road and hitting those moldings 
things and it makes it really rather tinny in here when you hit a gravel road or even a road that has a little bit of gravel down for grip in the winter time. I do like the interior here on the WRX. It's clean, it's simple, it's minimalist, but it does have some cheap plastics around which don't quite live up to the Volkswagen GTI's interior in my mind, but it is a very driver-focused interior. Everything is where I'd like it to be. The instrumentation in front of the driver is old school and analog, which kind of throws back to the old rally cars. I do have to take issue with this leather-wrapped steering wheel, though. It just feels really cheap and plasticky, and it kind of takes away from the overall feel of this car particularly something that's so you know performance oriented the steering feel is crisp and excellent but it, you know the feel of the steering wheel kind of takes away from that from a performance perspective though, I think Subaru's done a really nice job here, not just with its suspension, which still has a really nice cornering feel, but also with its engine. This four-cylinder boxer has been tuned nicely so that it's not a total beast all the time. I need to get it up above 3,000 RPMs for this turbo to really kick in, and when it does, it's got this great turbo note, which is rather very addictive. And as is the case with the full line of Subaru vehicles, it's nice to see that you can get the WRX with a six-speed Manual. That comes standard. It shifts really nicely and once you get it into sixth gear it also cruises on the highway really nicely and helps keep your revs down for better fuel efficiency. But if you are one of the roughly 20% of buyers who Subaru says are wanting an automatic version of the WRX, there is new in this latest generation a WRX exclusive continuously variable transmission. And while that normally kind of freaks people out when they're looking for a performance oriented car because they do tend to suck the power out of vehicles. This CVT is said to see fairly similar performance figures to the manual transmission in this car, the same kind of zero to 100 times. So if you have had a chance to drive it, please leave a comment below us and then let us know how that CVT does stack up to this six-speed manual. It is a $1,300 option on top of the base price, but you get paddle shifters on the steering wheel, so it does mimic some of the sporty feel that you can get with the manual in this car too. But I'm, I'm old school. This is what I'd want to have in this car. By the way, in the uh, other Subaru vehicles out there, the Forester, the Outback, the Impreza, the Crosstrek, if you go for the CVT in those models, you can get the EyeSight system in those vehicles. It gives you uh, adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist and all that kind of stuff. So you don't have the EyeSight system available to you in the WRX quite yet. There is a refresh of this vehicle coming out for the next model year, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's something that's optional to you at that point. Even still, though, the WRX does have a top safety pick rating from the insurance and you for highway safety, so still a very safe car to cruise around it. The one piece of helpful safety gear that is an option to you comes into play when you get into this sport trim that I'm in here. This is the middle of the road trim, which comes in at about $32,500. You're getting a sunroof, you're getting fog lights, you're getting LED headlights with auto high beams, you're getting a power driver's seat, and you're getting blind spot monitoring, which, you know what, when it first came out, I thought it was kind of gimmicky, but when a tester that I'm driving doesn't have blind spot monitoring at this point, I definitely notice it's a, it is a handy thing to have, and we do have it here on this sport trim. And then there's the Sport Tech trim, which is the next, tri next trim up. You're getting leather seats with the Sport Tech. You're getting a proximity key with push button start. Weird that that's not available on all trims of the WRX at this point. A lot of car companies are just putting it right across the line in their vehicles. You're getting a seven inch infotainment system screen with a nine speaker Harman Kardon sound system. And you might kind of want that extra bit of juice out of your sound system just because this car is rather noisy when you get it up to highway speed. And then you're also getting slightly larger 18 inch wheels. That top of the line sport tech trim comes in at just over 36 grand. So you gotta weigh out whether it's worth that extra $6,000. Well, when it comes to back seats in sports sedans, the WRX actually isn't too bad. At six foot two, I've got just enough headroom here. I've got about an extra inch or two, so you don't want to be much taller than this. Legroom isn't bad either, though. You can check it out here. I've adjusted the driver's seat for someone who's about six feet tall, and I've still got you know enough legroom to be sitting back here pretty comfortably. This tester that we're cruising around in this week is the Sport Edition, which means that we've got cloth seats in this vehicle. And while they look kind of cool, 
and there's some nice red stitching to kind of set them off, they do have this waffle pattern to them. And there's a reason why waffles are really delicious at breakfast time. It's because they hold all kinds of delicious stuff like maple syrup and jam and peanut butter. Personally, I would look at the highest level trim in the WRX just so I could get the leather option in this car. Elsewhere here in the back seat of the WRX, it's pretty basic. There's not much to talk about and there are no heated seats as an option even in the higher level trims. No USB port back here either for charging your devices and that is something to keep in mind. If you are the kind of person who has tons of devices that you want to charge, you've only got one USB port in this entire vehicle. Now for car seats, uh, not bad for front facing. Roger's been quite comfortable in here this week. It's when you get your kids into rear facing mode. If you've got really young kids, I've flipped our car seat around here and this is not a huge car seat but it's not a small one either. We've got a middle of the road rear facing car seat to kind of give you a sense for what the average is. You'd basically be rendering your partner, your spouse to sitting here in the second row with your kid until they flip around and become front facing. I'm surprised to see how squeezed it is for front passengers once you flip this car seat around. That's going to be something to keep in mind with this car. Well, the trunk on the WRX offers you 350 liters of capacity, and we've certainly come across much larger trunks than that, but it's actually not that bad, especially because it's a fairly deep trunk, which means that with our standardized trunk test, our stroller could fit lengthwise rather than widthwise, and that's going to save you a lot of space, and it means that we've got a diaper bag, a backpack, a couple of bags of groceries, a soccer ball, and a stroller in here with a bit of extra room to spare. The one downside to the WRX trunk is that it's not very deep. Even this stroller, which is not a particularly tall item is maxing out the height of this trunk. So if you've got large things like a big tall Rubbermaid bin, good luck fitting it in here. That's something to keep in mind. Another thing that's a little bit of an issue for me here on the WRX is that you don't have a traditional trunk release button here on the trunk. You can use your key fob, you can press a button from the driver's position, but why not just give me a button here to be able to easily access what's in the trunk area of this vehicle. And then finally, I talked about this with the Crosstrek when I was testing it with you last week an issue with that vehicle was that we didn't have a second row pass through in that middle seat so it means that if you've got skis or longer items you're going to have to give up at least one maybe even two of your passenger seats to use that 60 40 rear split in the second row in order to fit those longer items so in all not a bad trunk in the wrx when it comes to sedans but man i wish this thing was still available in a hatch because it would make it so much more usable for families you know, back when I was a kid, I remember asking my mom to stop off at car dealerships so I could pick up the latest and greatest brochures and geek out on the new features that cars had on board them. And I remember picking up one of the original WRX brochures. I looked at that car and one of the, one of the slogans that it had in the brochure was a wolf in sheep's clothing. And I don't think that's the case here anymore with the WRX. I think that it looks really sporty and like it's game to do anything. It's a fun car to drive but Subaru's done something cool here with this car. I like the fact that it now has an STI offering available to you as well. So if you're looking for the, you know, track ready, really hardcore version of this car, you can get that with the STI. And yes, in that car, you're getting 37 more horsepower. And yes, you're getting more powerful brakes and you're getting that big wing off the back. But the fact is this regular WRX, it means that it doesn't have to be quite as nuts. I just want something that's peppy and fun, but can still still drive my family around comfortably, I would save myself the money and go for this regular WRX. It's a shame it's not available in a hatch anymore because that would certainly make it a more family oriented car, but the WRX has great value for what it does and I'm a big fan. Next time I see you, I'm in another compact sedan that has a stick shift two weeks in a row. I love it. This one is not a sedan that you would typically think of as a sporty little number, but they're trying to change that. It's the Toyota Corolla. We're going to see how that one stacks up. That's in about seven days from now. Until then, make sure to check out familywheels.ca for all of our reviews. You can also check out our report card on the WRX. We break down exactly what we thought of this vehicle in bullet point form. You can check that out at familywheels.ca. Please subscribe while you're at it and we will see you in seven days from now to see if that uh, Corolla really is as sporty as they say. Until then, have a great week.